Thousands of people in Israel are taking part in protests against the government's planned judicial reforms. In Tel Aviv, demonstrators are staging rallies at important sites across the city, including the Stock Exchange, Defense Ministry, train stations and road junctions. It's all part of what's being described as a day of resistance by organizers. The action comes ahead of a parliament parliamentary vote on a key part of the proposed reforms, which critics have said would dismantle democracy. Our correspondent Rebecca Rittes is at the protests in Tel Aviv and gave us the latest from there. I'm standing at one of the central train stations in Tel Aviv. It's one of several stations across the country where big protests are taking place as we speak. As you mentioned, there are protests at numerous sites. These have been happening since 6.30 this morning all across the country. And of course, we know that these demonstrations have been happening for seven months now. And these days of disruption then tend to spike when uh, we're getting close to a vote. And as you said in your lead on the lead in, that vote is coming uh, as early as next week. We're expecting the second and third reading of another portion of the bill. And that is what protesters here are trying to disrupt. Uh, some protesters here at this train station have been prevented from coming up. Uh, we're here from the police, some people saying it's from the train staff. We're not exactly clear what's happening, but some people have been prevented. So this protest, while it doesn't look that big behind me, is certainly very powerful. And as I say, tens of thousands of people have been are at protests like this across the country. Rebecca, these protests have been going on for months now. Are there any signs that the government is actually listening? Well, yes and no, it's hard to say. The, they were very effectual in uh, earlier in the year, at, towards the end of the last Knesset session, uh, when Prime Minister Benjamin Netanyahu fired the, def the defence minister, albeit temporarily, as it turns out. Uh, he fired the defence minister and there was a mass... For speaking out, sorry, I should say, he fired the defence minister because the defence minister spoke out against the judicial reforms. And then the protesters really came out in force and they were effectual uh, back then a few months ago in halting or pausing the judicial reforms. Of course, now the government, the coalition, Benjamin Netanyahu, under pressure from his coalition members uh, to push forward with the reforms, the, the protests are out. And of course, they're, they're really hoping that they're going to be able to affect the same amount of change. The president of Israel, Isaac Herzog, is in America and everyone here, including former prime ministers, urging the president to bring that message, the message that they're not happy with these reforms to the, prime, to the president of the United States. Rebecca Ritt is there reporting from Tel Aviv for us. Thank you very much, Rebecca. And as Rebecca mentioned there, Israel's President Isaac Herzog is in Washington for talks with the Biden administration. The U.S. is seen as Israel's closest ally, but relations have been strained by the expansion of settlements in the occupied West Bank and the government's controversial judicial reforms. The U.S. and Israel have long had close and friendly political ties. Despite differences over settlement policy and the treatment of the Palestinian territories, common security and geopolitical interests have prevailed. With Prime Minister Benjamin Netanyahu's latest political course, the relationship has become more difficult. Although President Joe Biden just invited Mr. Netanyahu to the White House, he has also been openly critical of the new controversial right-wing government. He said in an interview, I'm one of those that believes Israel is almost a security risk for a two-state solution. There are some very extreme elements in the government. And so it's not Prime Minister Benjamin Netanyahu who will be at the capital to mark Israel's 75th anniversary. Instead, it will be President Isaac Herzog who addresses Congress in a joint session. He has criticized the Netanyahu government and its plans to reform the judiciary system, but also led efforts to find a compromise between the government and opposition. In Israel, compromise seems hard to come by. Huge demonstrations against proposed judicial reforms are dominating the streets. The country is deeply divided over the political path of the new government. I asked Brett Brun, the former global engagement director at the Obama White House, how he sees the future of the U.S.-Israeli relationship. I think that U.S.-Israel relations are at a historic low, and this speech is going to be designed to repair some of the damage uh, done both by Prime Minister Netanyahu as well as members of his cabinet who are 
on the outer extremities of the political spectrum in Israel. So this visit really is designed to start and re to repair some of, of those um, broken bridges. When President Herzog addresses Congress here, he'll be trying to balance his own feelings about the government at home with the need to strengthen America's crucial friendship with Israel.